Hey, first and foremost, just want to thank everybody who either left a comment, emailed, uh, sent a message about the very first video in this tech stack series. I'm glad it was helpful. Enjoyed learning about some of the technology I'm not using or not aware of, just to put on my radar. But uh, yeah, this was the engagement I was hoping we would get. Have a good conversation about what's working, what's not working. So glad the first video was good. Let's get to the second video. It's gonna be a lot shorter. We're just talking about uh, software and tools that I'm using to help run the portfolios and do investment research for client portfolios. So should be a quick, short one. Let's get to it. All right, so we hit all the main ones in the first video about kind of running the financial planning relationship. A couple of those companies we're going to mention again today because some of those tools carry over into the investment research side of things. Or maybe we could argue that we could have left them out since they're more focused with investments uh, rather than just the financial planning side. But I felt like every company we discussed in the last one was very important. This video, as I mentioned in the intro, will be a lot shorter, uh, just talking investment. And then the final one will be kind of the operation side of things. So a few companies to get with. Let's start with the custodians. We talked about them last time, but very important because part of the uh, benefits that they provide is the portfolio management software that I'm using. We'll start with TD Ameritrade. Again, big shout out to them. Big nervousness on my part about what it's going to look like going forward with the merger. Uh, but TD was the, the, the custodian that would give me a shot as a new firm five years ago with very little assets under management. Uh, they believed in me and gave me the opportunity to get started. So very, very appreciative to them and very loyal to them. And also they had iRebound, which is what I use pretty much to run the majority of the client portfolios. If you're not familiar with it, iRebound is a rebalancing tool that is included if you're on TD's platform but it is extremely powerful, way beyond uh, what I ever use it for. So you can actually use iRebound to get down into tax loss harvesting and you know doing a lot of different things, position rebalancing, very, very deep, very, very powerful tool. Um, I use it really just to run the day-to-day -day check of money coming in. So I have a rebalance set up basically every day to see, is anybody having any money come in? If so, does it need to be uh, invested and where does it need to go? So the beauty of it is, the point client portfolios are being rebalanced almost on every contribution that comes in. The software looks at the current portfolio. It looks at the bands that you'll set up when you set it up. So how much drift you want to have in your portfolio. And then it will make a recommendation of here's where these dollars need to go. So it makes it easier for me rather than having to go to the spreadsheet and figure out where it needs to go. This contribution needs to go to this fund or split between these two funds. It prepares the trade. I approve it all. It goes through the system and runs it all for me. It'll do block trades. Um, I even use it to run uh, the portfolios for my retirees, which consists of two separate models, if you will. One model that is um, you know, mutual funds, another model that's ETF. We put those two together. The ETF section of it is a tactical strategy. I'm not going to get into the, all the details there, but the beauty of it is if I need to make a change within the tactical month to month, I go in, I make the change to the model, I go process a rebalance for all the clients that have these combined portfolio, and it will make the recommendations for me. It'll also look to rebalance within the mutual fund side of things or any of the other ETFs if any of them have got out of, out of line. So it's a very powerful tool. It doesn't do the trading for you. It gives you the recommended trades, and then you as the advisor or the investment manager manager needs to go through and approve those trades and submit them. And then the block trading feature on it's very nice. It'll do a block trade and it will actually distribute all the way to all the accounts rather than me having to go and manually do it. So it really does let me not have to spend a lot of time on the actual portfolio management uh, from the rebalancing, from the trading, it can handle it all. Client has a big check, you know, they have a, a rollover from a 401k, 150,000 or whatever it might be. You go in and you just invest that cash only. You need to generate cash. You can go into iRebound and say, I need to generate $10,000 cash for this client. It will go through and pull from the right funds, make a recommended trade for the right funds to give you the money that you need for the distribution while keeping the portfolio in line. So it's a very powerful tool and one that I use. You could even use it basically to set up almost like a robo run. Um, so you can have the portfolios consistently managed and run by it. You just have to, to approve the trades and execute them for. So very powerful tool that I use to run the portfolios. Also using Altruist going forward uh, for the Wealth Genesis model, which is the quote unquote, I'm calling it a robo, but not a true robo advisor relationship. Not a relationship that I'm gonna be marketing heavily, it's just gonna be there, but we'll also be using it for the portfolios for Wealth Fusion going forward as well. Main reason being uh, Altruist platform is very user friendly. I love the way it looks and for the clients that will be in those two models, I think a clean, 
um, you know, tech centric look is going to be something that will resonate with them and they have a great app as well. Uh, and they have the same auto trading that goes on. You can create your portfolios and your models, put in bandwidths and it will do the rebalancing for you throughout. So again, it's taking trading responsibilities off my plate, uh, making sure that I'll still review them and check on them, but not having to spend a lot of time calculating how many shares I need to trade and rebalance and transfer and exchange and all of those things, the software does it for me. So. You know, portfolio management is not a lot of fun necessarily. It's not the greatest value that we bring to our clients, so we should not spend a lot of time on it. And between TD Ameritrade and Altruist, I've got those trading tools to, to take care of everything that I need to from all of the um, nuances and the time suck of portfolio management that goes on. So it means I just really need to be monitoring the portfolio, monitoring what my clients need, and leverage that technology to do the trading part. So we hit the custodians and the trading tools that I'm using there. When it comes to research and, ana and analysis of portfolios, uh, let's go analysis first because that's what I use more when new clients come in. Um, I use a software called Quanti. And as I'm talking through this, I'm going to have a screen share pop up showing you a you know, sample report of a portfolio. But I really like Quanti because it integrates with TD, so it just pulls right through. So a client account transfers into TD Ameritrade, it'll pull through through Quanti and I can take a look at it, get diver, uh, dive deeper into um, you know, the composition of it, the correlation of the funds, the expenses, allocations, all that stuff we need to look at as we're evaluating the portfolio. Uh, but if you don't have a client that is at TD already and you're doing this part of your presentation to get them to become a client, you can manually put these funds in, uh, mainly put the portfolio in that is, and be able to compare it to what you might recommend. Uh, so I like to use it not necessarily as a tool to recommend my portfolio, but more of a tool to say, is my portfolio going to bring additional value to this client's current portfolio? or are there components that will fit within what we're doing and kind of keep those in there. So uh, it's nice because as you can see, it gives you a side-by-side -side comparison of the portfolios. We can run all the way down from looking at the allocations to the expenses, and you can really put a lot into this report. Now, the one I'm showing you doesn't have projected or it doesn't have performance uh, or other metrics in there, um, you know, sharp ratios and all those things that we could really geek out on. I really want to use this report to show my clients, here's where your current investments are, here's where I recommend it are, here's the reasons why, you know, maybe it's better diversification, maybe it's more small cap exposure, maybe it's lower fees, whatever it might be, but this allows me to show the client um, apples to apples comparison between the portfolio so they can see um, kind of under the hood of what the portfolio is going to look like going forward and why I'm making these recommendations. So I really like Quanti, very cost effective tool and they continue to add new and new features to it. So I've been very happy with it and it was one of my very first pieces of technology I decided to use when I launched the firm. The other tool I use is Ycharts um, and it is a an all encompassing software. It has everything in it from being able to do individual stock research to fund research, ETFs and mutual funds. You can really get into a lot. This has a lot of data, way more than I ever use. Um, some of our favorite bloggers use it to create charts or look at specific metrics in the markets or with separate stocks. If that's your thing, it's great for it. I love it. It's another one of the tools that I've had since day one. I actually paid for it myself before I even started my firm when I was at a previous firm just to be able to have all of this information in one place. Again, probably more information that you're going to need as a financial advisor, but it's, I would rather have too much information than not, not enough. And the one thing I did want to plug for the YChart software is they do have a newer feature called Model Portfolios, which I would say could compete with Quanti. Um, I, I think Quanti gives us a little bit more, which is why I still continue to use it. But if you're on a budget and you only need one and can only have one, you might want to give Y charts a look to see does the model portfolio section of it provide you everything you need to do with portfolio analysis. It's going to allow you to create the portfolio you want to use. You can compare it to other portfolios. So you could do a similar comparison to what I'm doing on Quanti, uh, but it doesn't give you all of the same details. I'm also not a bad creature of habit, but I'm really used to the Quanti uh, report. So I like that report as a part of my presentation. The reports that I get from YCharts are great. It gives me all this information, but there's something about the Quanti report that I like a little bit more and why I still use it. But YCharts is great. And realistically, I think that you could use it um, all by itself. So it's going to give you, you know, historical performance of the portfolio. It's going to give you um, breakdown of the funds, asset classes, size, all that stuff you want to know and allow you to run comparisons to benchmarks and everything as well. So um, I'm using Y charts to keep up on some of the individual securities that clients have that they bring over 
or uh, you know, a few of them may want to buy a stock here and there in the portfolio and we work through that, build it into the plan just to keep an eye on things. It's good to see also what's going on in the overall economy and the overall markets. I just feel like it's a tool that if we're keeping up to date on everything, even if we're not necessarily active managers or holding ourselves out there as ex, you know, investment gurus, it's still good to know this stuff and it's not a high expense. So um, those are what I'm using for researching the portfolios, um, researching funds to consider for the portfolios, and then monitoring it going forward. So running those reports regularly just to keep up to date with what's going on with the portfolio. The final piece I'll throw in last minute on the portfolio management is again, we won, one we discussed last time, but risk allies. You know, making sure that clients are going into the right portfolio, talking about risk with them, knowing that risk tolerance is a fluid number or fluid measurement, uh, but it's a place to start. So that's the other piece is the portfolios in iRebal and Altruist have already been filled into Riskalyze so I can make sure that as I try to automate as much of the investment management as possible, uh, we've got the right Riskalyze score for the client, which gives us the right portfolio, which goes into iRebal or Altru Altruist. So then it's managed for me. A lot of the dirty work is done for me. I just kind of go through and approve and place the trades. So that would be the final piece to the portfolio side of things. So that's it for this one. Told you it was going to be shorter. What are you using in your tech stack when it comes to portfolio management and research? You know, a lot of Morningstar fans out there. Um, I don't know why I never went down that road. Uh, I think maybe just I was looking for new companies to, to start with when I first got started. But Morningstar is always a good go-to. But what other companies are you using that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of uh, that we can throw in the comments and start to have a conversation about those as well? So throw any of those portfolio management or investment research companies you're using, throw that in the um, comments below and we'll take a look at those and maybe that'll be one that we'll discuss in next year's roundup of what I have in my fintech. So that's it for today. Remember, last one's going to be over the operations. We're going to be talking about payroll and things of that sort to run the business. So hopefully this has been helpful. It's been fun for me to kind of go through and talk about these technologies that I really enjoy. And we'll see you all in the next episode.